click the live stream button. So, folks, welcome back to another live stream on Box Mining. My name is Michael, and today we are discussing why did Bitcoin and Ethereum and all the other cryptocurrencies dump today? I mean, look at the charts right now. <laughs> it's just a lot of blood on the markets right now. I think a lot of people will probably be freaking out because Bitcoin dropped to $35,000. I think there were people who were expecting this to moon very quickly. And we did a live stream around three days ago talking about the possibilities of what's happening. And one of the scenarios here is playing out, which is scenario number two, that Bitcoin takes consolidation, takes a little bit of pullback before everything pumps. But we are going to take a look at some data as well here, because there is a lot of data suggesting that there were a lot of bulls being liquidated. There's a lot of data suggesting that some whales are cashing out, are dumping the market. And lastly, we're going to take a look at the CPI data. This is a new data that came in. This is beyond good. So technically speaking, Bitcoin should blown, but we're seeing this pullback. What does it mean? We'll talk about it in today's episode today. So guys, if you're new to this channel, welcome, welcome, welcome. I would love to speak to all of you. We'll have a chat session at the end as well because I want to answer your questions. And I think there's a lot of people who are concerned from the last stream as well, people who are concerned about these pullbacks. I'll relay some of my personal experiences that, you know, being in this space for six years, I, I want to share some of that with you so you guys can calm down and then feel a little bit better because we survived more than this. We survived 20, 30% dumps in one single day for Bitcoin. And, and guess what? I was making those videos back then too. Like, guys, why did we why did we dump today? Oh my God. Why did Bitcoin dump to $6,000? Is it over for Bitcoin? We were, we were talking about that for a long time. So I mean, um, if you guys have been there, for, uh, well, welcome back. If you guys haven't been there during those times, welcome to this channel. This is a repeating theme on this channel. So I just want to make sure that you guys are aware that Bitcoin can have these crazy movements. So we'll take a look at the charts. We'll take a look at the data. We'll take some positive data as well. Everything in this video. So guys, if you're coming in, smash up those likes. Let's get started. All right, I haven't played that intro in ages, guys. So, all right, Ronnie Ray, come back. Well, it's back. Crypto Graham, it's back. Blade Runner is back. Llama 666 is back. This is our core team, guys. Smash up. Say just hi, hi. If you guys are here, say hi. Tell me where you're from. And if you guys have been here for a while, say hi, too. All right, say hi, too. Also, we have an access to a special what we call the chats group. I'm going to send out a link there. This is our private group for people who are here to share information, share some alpha. So let me just throw that group into this chat before we start, because I do want our community to grow a little bit. We closed off our community, uh, <laughs> and then we want to share that with, with you guys, the people who are still here, the people who are here early. Then we're going to close off that group because like, you know, I don't want too many people chatting and spamming that group. But if you guys, you guys are early, you guys are survivors. I want you into this. So yeah, send the group out. Um, but yeah, we got Steak Sauce says, yo, Chuck Norris says, yo, Michael. Welcome, welcome, welcome back, guys. So let's take a quick look at why did Bitcoin dump today? Let's take a look at the markets first. Obviously, just just a lot of red. There are some winners, though. All right, very quickly. Oh, wait, by the way, this is how we this is how we look at the market, guys. So let's look at the bubbles first. So we got uh, Celestia still up, FTT is up, Cake is up, but everything else is down. Now, are they down massively? No, surprisingly not. I would have ex expected if if this was the bear market, I would have expected pullbacks to be much much larger. To be honest, especially when all coins are just just pumping like crazy, especially like look at these charts like Avalanche, right? It shot from $12 to $19 in the space of 14 days or less than that, seven days, really, right? If you if, if this was during the, um, the bear market, these numbers were being crushed, right? These would be an anomaly. People would have been just dumping hardcore and shorting the market. In fact, you'll be just seeing all over Twitter, people short, 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 but that's not the case right now. And if you look at like crazy, 
Celestia has been just insane recently. I mean, these these are just showing like 26% in a day, 157% in this week, right? So this is really signifying the market strength. So even though that, yes, Bitcoin, we had a consolidation, Ethereum, we consolidated, right? But, 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 but these, <laughs> these figures are way stronger than I uh, uh to be fair to than those bear levels so which is why there's so many people actually messaging me right now there's a lot of people who are saying Michael what are you doing what are you up to let's 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 get a call right and all of a sudden my calendarly calendarly can't pronounce calendarly it's just being filled up with calls people trying to get in on either speaking to me or something crazy or or new deals I'm trying to get some new deals as well before this. Um, starts so it's a lot busier. So now let's look at why this is happening and what what happened. What's the major data that happened? So stock markets are on fire right now because inflation data came in better than expected. So the expectation here is that Feds, because they halted interest rates, they can start lowering them soon as the economy recovers to allow money to flow back into the market and. The stock market's responding to that. Look at that. There was a huge pump this morning with both the SCMP, uh, sorry, uh, not SCMP, SMP 500 going up, NASDAQ going up, Dow Jones Industrials going up, and the performance is just very strong. It's huge, really. Huge, huge red rally. Like it's, it's fire over there on traditional stock market. So a lot of people expected that for Bitcoin too, but Bitcoin pulled back, right? So, so this is a, one of the cases where the stock markets, let me suggest the microphone a little bit. The stock markets and Bitcoin, they were not correlated. They actually, one went up and the other went down. There was talk about money flowing from Bitcoin and moving over to the stock market. And I think that's the dumbest mistake anyone can make right now. Uh, I'll be honest, God honest to you guys, right? Not financial advice, but if I were to give financial advice, if I was like, you know, <laughs> if I was a bank, I'd be like, Sonny. That is the dumbest decision I've ever seen to move from Bitcoin right now to stocks. <laughs> there is so much going to happen next year. And when Bitcoin moves, it moves. It doesn't move like a meager. I think, you know, if, you, if you're looking at traditional stock markets, we'll just like flash that very quickly here. Um, if you look at stock markets, right? right S&P, NASDAQ, right? They move 2%. 2 Huh? Two? Where's my 20? Where's my 200? Right? So this is why I'm in crypto. I guess we have insane growth potential. And we've seen that in the last month as well. If you just look at, zoom out a little bit for Bitcoin, right? Instead of looking at 24-hour charts, you look at the 30-day charts. We moved in the last 30 days from $27,000 all the way up to $37,000. So something like a, um, a, a consolidation here to $35,000 is extremely, extremely common. And in fact, um, a, a, dump be, be, a dump beyond that is actually quite expected, to be honest, um, and especially in this market. Um, Chuck Norris said, S South China Morning Post, because I accidentally said um, SCMP, which is our uh, news um, here. Uh, in Hong Kong uh, instead of the standard S&P 500. All right, anyways, so what's the expectation here? Let me just zoom out a little bit. Let me reset the scale for here. Please restart auto fits your screen. So where's, where, where's my support at, right? Where, where's my support at? So I drew one line here, which is the resistance. Let me draw another line, which is the support for Bitcoin that we can see. So potentially, all right, if if this dump plays out right now, our support was holding here. All right, our support was holding here. But it could be the case if you keep continuing dumping further, it could be the case that we do have a mini dump before um, before we have the massive rally. So it could be the case that we dump it beyond 35,000, hit the 31,000 support here, and then keep going up from there. That's, that's my current um, risk assessment. Like for me, I like to assess my risk. What, where, where can we dump down to? And then where is the upside, right? So the upside is all the way up here, but it could be the case that we bounce off the support. So what, what, is, what else is happening here? Well, what's causing this immense spike down? I think it's also quite obvious that there were a lot of longs on the market. People expecting the inflation data to, take, um, to rally Bitcoin, to send us into the stratosphere. Well, there were a lot of liquidations this week. 
so if you actually um, okay note to myself it's great to have this but at the same time sometimes the the titles here they confuse me so anyways so let's take a look at liquidations in the last 24 hours there were this figure has 263 million dollars of long liquidations that means people who were hoping that the market would go up they had a long position but they didn't have they, have, they were over leveraged they were overly bullish and then they got smashed down so that was what caused this huge dump as well right normally we have like small dumps but these large dumps are caused by liquidations when things happen all right they hit these particular price um stop losses and then just got stop loss out so this is what caught, it was a catalyst for the price of Bitcoin moving down. The other reason is because people, some people were freaking out moving to traditional stocks because they thought, oh, yeah, Bitcoin's slow, a little bit too slow. <laughs> Major misread. There's also one additional bit of information as well. So Bitcoin whales unload $2 billion of BTC in just one week. So these are the whales that are not the strongest holders, right? So what we've been seeing is we've been seeing the biggest whales like MicroStrategy, they've been accumulating over time. They've been continuously accumulating, but there are still some weaker whales that said, you know what, 38,000 is, you know, it's good for me. <laughs> All right, these are the slightly weaker hands. So these weaker hands have unloaded $2 billion of Bitcoin into the market in just one week. So these are all the negative information. So let me get the negative out of the way first. Bam, bam, bam. Okay, let me let me see. Oh yeah, wow. The, um, my face froze at the Yao Ming look. <laughs> Cam frozen. Yes. Um. Yeah. So I I froze myself. My All right, that's right. I'm trying my best to fix the camera right now. Give me one second. All right, please work. Elgato says, um, that is so weird. Sorry, technical difficulty, guys.
All right. At least the audio works. All right, cool. Cool. So I'm very frustrated right now. Oh, it works. My God. Oh my God. That was wow. Okay, guys, 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 thank you guys for waiting. Thank you so much for waiting, guys. Uh, the audio just completely messed up here, but we are back, guys. We are back. I tried to be a mime. I realized uh, the audio wasn't working. The video wasn't working. I tried to be a mime, but I realized, yep, don't be a mime. Don't quit my day job. That, that, my mime skills, not so strong at all whatsoever. So let's go back. So yeah, so we have some whales dumping, at least. So we're back. So we're back. So, um, <laughs> We got we got a good suggestion here. Name once is turn it um on and off. But yeah, that that was the only way. I I had to the the way I fixed it was I just jammed it in, jammed it in. You, you gotta that's 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 a strategy, right? That's that's um I know I know I'm playing around with this, but that's a strategy. Got jam it in. All right, so yeah, so we do have some whales um dumping. This is a completely normal guy. So I, we made so many videos. I was speaking a little bit earlier. We made so many videos in the past about Bitcoin dumping. And um, this is not going to be the first one. This is not going to be the last one. And especially in markets um, that are even in bull markets, what we do have is we do have insane pumps and insane dumps. And even as we're making this video, as you see Bitcoin just moving back a little bit, um, back up a little bit more. But this is not the last time we're going to see this. All right. We're going to make tons of videos. I'm going to make daily live streams and we're going to on some days we're going to experience those 20, 30 percent dumps, even for the price of Bitcoin. Bitcoin price, um, even though it's it's a lot more stable nowadays because just of how big of a market cap Bitcoin is and how many institutional players and market makers are here, we're still going to experience huge volatility. And for altcoins, it's going to be even worse. We're going to see some days where like some altcoins are just going to be dumping 20, 30, 40, 50%, 100% possible. And it's 100% possible that those dumps recover, right, in one or two days. In fact, one or two hours. This is sometimes how the FUD works. There were times before when, you know, like, I'm not going to talk about the times before, but there were times before when there was a, a fake rumor being spread that Vitalik died, right? Do you guys remember that time Vitalik died and then big Ethereum prices just crashed and people were freaking out until Vitalik had to post a, like, a, a, a photo of him with the current Ethereum block just to prove that he's alive. But that was how crazy crazy though the markets were so yes so today all right just to just to summarize the point on bitcoin and why bitcoin crashed sure the cpi data came out it was very very promising but the money flowed into the stock market right so s p 500 dow jones um nasdaq index all up bitcoin those bulls all right just just a little bit of bleed out causing longs to get liquidated from the market right millions of dollars worth of longs being destroyed just gone from the market there were also some whales some evidence of some whales selling unloading that bitcoin two billion dollars of bitcoin unloaded not unusual all right at the start of a bull market there are still some perma bears out there they're thinking oh my god this is this is a top they're, they're, they're just like yeah you know what 38 but that always happens this always happens there are bulls that unloaded there, there are um, bitcoin bulls that well, we can't really call them bulls but with your bitcoin unloaders that just cashed out at like uh, you know uh, $15 30 a thousand it happens or happens um, 15 was when I was um, I sold my first bunch of Bitcoin um, I mined up Bitcoin 10 uh, ten dollars it pumped to a hundred uh, to fifteen dollars in a single day I was young I didn't know what I was doing sold it all right so you know that stuff happens that stuff happens all right but there are some positives. That's, uh, we, we talked about all the negatives. There are some positives. What we talked about last stream was that there was a huge amount of Tether being added to the market, right? Tether now is coming out to say, you know what? There's growing ETF excitement. We are preparing for the next market. This is why they're printing out so much Tether. Now, this is extremely positive news if you are looking at the trades, right? Because when that Tether gets prepared, it's like Tether's loading out the guns. USDTP being printed, buying Bitcoin, 
right? Buying the alts, buying Solana, buying your chain link, buying your avalanche, buying all your social fight game fight tokens. That is the gun being loaded and it's billions of dollars being loaded. Just the craft, just you can see growing amounts of tether. Now this is the current spike here <laughs> at it being added. So tether, more tether is being printed. That's going to flow into the exchanges as people start to um, put US dollars into and buy that tether up and um, loading the market. We also saw in the last stream as well, there were more institutional investors. There's actually a 99% growth in the amount of institutional funds as well coming into the space. So this is why we're seeing the pump early, right? I saw this rant today, all right? I saw this rant today. I think this was quite interesting. Um, I was reading Reddit. I love to read Reddit in the morning. But this rant was saying, about this rally, historically, every bull market started after the halving event, not before. <laughs> right? So this is, it, it's true. It's true, right? Having uh, Bitcoin, Big Bitcoin having charts, all right? This usually the pattern is that the having happens. These are the lines, right? I'll, I'll show this to you guys a little bit larger. But what happens is that it's almost around 60 days after the Bitcoin rally happens, right? The, the having happens and we, we're seeing the having happening around in half a year's time from now. So why are we pumping so early, right? Well, well, ETFs. Right. So he's saying, oh, it's true that ETFs are submitted. I think people are underestimating how big ETFs are going to be, because as you talk to institutional investors, you realize that they don't want to hold spot Bitcoin. They don't. They just don't. There's just too much risk. Just like getting out of ledger, you know, a cool wallet or whatever. I have a bunch of these things, but it's too dangerous for these fund managers with trillions of dollars to be plugging in what looks like a USB stick and then loading up with Bitcoin. Right. If that um, stick gets stolen, if something gets hacked, they're going to be out. The second reason why fund managers and I think this is a bigger reason as well. The second reason why fund managers are scared uh, of buying Bitcoin before the ETF is because they are spineless. Right. Simply said, they are spineless because if they and, you know, like they, they have to have responsibility or right? they're going to claim that responsibility. If they buy Bitcoin and Bitcoin prices drop, they are to blame. But once the ETF happens and everyone buys Bitcoin, right? This is the the masses, the mass, the masses of the institution investors. By the way, I'm not talking about the retail, but I'm talking about institutional investors. When everyone does it, right? They all flock over because now they can just point the blame at someone else. They're like, oh, you know what? Uh, BlackRock bought, bought, so we bought too. You know, so they have an excuse. This is what the why the ETF is a lot more powerful than people think. It's not just a, a, a way of entry, but it's also it's, it's a herd mentality. It brings out the herd mentality, which is why Bitcoin is pumping a little bit early. So anyways, those, those are those are for me one of the strongest reasons. Tether being printed already. This is direct evidence that money is flowing in. And of course, we um, uh, the ETFs that are coming. Now, ETFs talking, speaking about ETFs, I saw this. This is um, the ETFs, the, the SEC's window to approve spot ETFs. This is what made us push up um, Bitcoin prices um, early on. Now, that window is closing though, right? So initially it was believed that we do have a, what they were saying is a, from up to the 17th, the window, the window was uh, November 9th to 17th. It was an eight day window for the SEC to approve the Bitcoin ETFs early, early. Um, the reason why that they pointed out this window was because the, of their delay in the comments. So there, there, was, a com there was a comment period that was happening. And right now in this period, if it's past November 17th, there's another comment period commencing. So the window will close then. So this is why it's like, if, if, if the SEC was to decide this early, it would be before November the 17th. So that, that moment is closing. All right. So this is why the market could react. Okay. If this was the reason why the markets moved up so aggressively because of this window, people were, you know, thinking that there's an ETF approval, this window will close on the 17th. But that's actually kind of expected, right? We know that the SEC just stalls their feet all the time. So I wouldn't be surprised, all right? I, I know that uh, Bloomberg analysts are saying there's a 90% chance for the Bitcoin ETF to be approved in January, by January the 10th. 
All right. I believe that's more like 70 to 60 percent. I still believe that the SEC is going to drag their feet. There could be a possibility. Right. And this is a very micro thing. I always prepare for the worst and expect. Uh, I always prepared for worse. And sometimes a lot of times things go better. So then I'm happier. Right. So by preparing for the worst, by preparing for things to drag out longer, I'm happier, more surprised when the things come early. I mean, that's that's the way um, I usually operate. But I do because of the how strong the markets are. And be, even even despite all the negativity, the fact that Bitcoin is still at this level of thirty five thousand dollars. I think this is a very, very strong market, which is why I'm doing a lot more of these live streams and doing a lot more of these um, videos so that we can educate people on early. We want people to everyone as many people as possible to get the gains out of this market right so that's why i really hope you guys can support this channel i am going very hard into this for me i just felt rusted when i came back to live stream i felt like oh my god i, I haven't done this in ages but um uh, now i'm here and I'm, I'm i'm pressing that live stream button i'm seeing you guys and i'm very, very excited so guys mac make sure you smash up the like button before we start for our next segment, we have a bit more news. I do want to have a little Axe segment for Bybit. All right, if that works. Nope. <laughs> for Bybit. There Bybit is a top cryptocurrency exchange, and now they are listing new coins the fastest with the most volume, which is pretty insane if you want to get in on all that crypto action. If you do want to join the Bybit exchange, it is a limited time offer which is 50 free us dollars if you do the first kyc and you load more than 100 dollars into the exchange if you're interested sign up with the link down below and you'll automatically get in this offer remember it's only for the first 100 people to do so so what are you waiting for man i look so tired in that one I look I, why do, why am i still per perpetually tired well okay Anyways, guys, um, Bybit, we do have a special offer with them as well for the iPhone 15 as well, just to uh, tell you guys. So to, to qualify, guys, this is basically a very limited live stream, uh, sorry, limited offer. So this is a iPhone, wait, let me throw this away. This is an iPhone uh, 15 Pro Max. Oh, my brain is, no, buffed up. Little, 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 I can't speak iPhone 15 3 Plus, we're giving you three of those. They are the titanium ones, uh, 512 gigabytes. And we're going to draw three winners in a live stream. So what you have to do is deposit 100 USDT and make one trade. That shows up as a list of UIDs, and then we're going to draw them randomly um, on a live stream. So everything will be clear and transparent. So this is the best offer because not only do you get this, you get the airdrop as well. Basically, $100 deposit, you get $20 airdrop, and you get the $30,000 $30, bonus rewards. And right now, of course, by bit their spot trades are all free which is one of the reasons why i'm using that we have some comments and saying llama 666 we are all palau citizens now <laughs> sd says dude the palau id kyc idea for Bybit was great so a lot of people um i'm actually have a video coming up about this so uh, because Bybit is restricted in some countries you can actually sign up with a palau id um this is not for I want to say very clearly, this is not for tax reasons because you haven't moved out of your country. If you if you have a country that you get taxed, so <laughs> America looking at you there, uh, this, don't use this strategy to like evade tax. That's illegal. But this strategy allows you to gain access if you're outside of you know um, certain places. It allows you to get a official government ID to say that you are a uh, uh, you're from the government of Palau and you can use that for KYC on exchanges. So that's to answer everyone here. So anyways, guys, let's move on to the next topic here. We have Bitcoin rainbow charts. So looking at the chart here, this is this is where I'm very bullish. OK, so this rainbow chart's also been a little bit adjusted. All right. So what happens is that every cycle, all right, this the, um, every every cycle, it tends to follow on this chart. Oh man, okay, sorry guys. The the stream deck was not working. So every cycle, all right, and this is a logarithmic chart. We, ha we have all data from 2010 all the way to 2024. So you can see that between the charts here. But what you see is that um, the price of Bitcoin tends to follow within these rainbow bands, right? And the rainbow has two sides. So the red side is when Bitcoin is in a bull, like a serious bull market, massive rally to the peak and to the bottom, which is the blue area. 
right? So this is also drawn in a log logarithmic scale so that you can see the growth of Bitcoin. So every every um, line here bar is actually a 10x. So it goes from $1 to $10 to 100 to basically adds a zero every time these lines go up, right? So so if, if things go crazy, right? And it depends if this halving event is going to be the biggest motivator. We have two, actually three strong drives for Bitcoin coming in 2020. But if if it's true that the halving is an indicator and the bull market lasts as long as maybe 2025, holy crap, guys, we can potentially hit, right, 30K. Oh, sorry, it's not 30K, 300K for the price of Bitcoin. That could be a possibility. That could be a possibility. So this is why I'm in the space, guys. I'm looking at this enormous upside. It could, it could be that we do another 10x from here, which is nuts, but it could go up even more because we haven't seen the power of the ETF yet, right? This doesn't factor in like the crazy amounts of institutional investments that can come in into the space, right? Um, and I'll be, I'll be very, very scared when, um, when things go too crazy. Oh, this was the article I was trying to find earlier, the liquidations. I saw it's $300 million of liquidations, or you can look at this um, this map to see it. Also, something that's also quite interesting, I'm just trying to clear all the tabs here. I'm just trying to move them as much as possible. You guys saw that I was talking about robo trading. So I was trying to compare this to just trading on the markets, right? And robo trading, the, the, the bots actually decided to short the market. In fact, it still has a... It's the, one of the bots still has a short position, but what that meant was that over the last seven days, the bots were making money every day, right? Which is why, yet again, which is which answers the question why I'm looking at these bots and why I personally am running these bots is because they have a different risk profile from just having exposure to the market. Right, so they are making money, even though the um, these over the past few days, crypto prices were dropping. They were in fact shorting the market. But I just want to say here as well that the bots, there were multiple bots running. Not all the bots were making the the right trades. So it's good to have a combination of bots running to have a um, more broad risk profile. So I think we're gonna look at that a little bit more deeper in future episodes. But I thought that was just a fun thing to bro um, bring up and show you guys. All right, that's pretty much. Um, if for the top news, I didn't see too much um, other stuff um, being bounced up. I do want to say that there's still a few events coming up. So today I'm going to go to the Solana Hacker House today. So the Solana Hacker House is are these events that hackers come and they show their top projects. So we're interviewing them. I'm actually going to bring my new toy here. Um, this is the DJI Osmo. So we're going to bring that and show you guys what's happening. And we're going to show you guys the new projects as well, because I feel like this time for me, for sure, I'm spinning up like uh, my engines, my my investment engines right now, because I feel like right now, uh, if the mobile market comes, I want to be in the best position possible. And this is, uh, this is a mistake that I made in the last bull market, because I didn't have the three, four months of preparation before the market started, before everything started running like crazy. I mean, I was very lucky that I got into DeFi and I got to the very start before DeFi just hockey stick, right? So we were talking about Wi-Fi. And then when I was talking about it, people were like, oh, I don't trust DeFi. And then the results came, right? Then the results were like, oh my God, this stuff was like giving out like <laughs> thousands of percentages of APY and the coins themselves, once you got them, they started pumping, right? That was insane. That was like 10X, 100X your money in like weeks, right? But this time, the last time I was lucky that I had DeFi, but this time I feel like I need I need more like feelers in the market, which is why yet again I'm deploying capital, I'm buying alts, I'm buying DeFi, I'm buying SocialFi, right? We recently I recently actually had a talk with Republic as well. So Republic, what they're doing is they're doing basically content creation. They actually have an app already uh, that's set up. Basically, it's it looks a little bit like TikTok right now. But the potential here is actually much greater. Actually, I just signed up on think not on this live stream account, but on another one. But what what was what's happening here is I feel like there's more ways to grow crypto. I think that's that's the key. I think that's very different from maybe two, three years ago where you know it was just Bitcoin. Now, right, with the power of Web3, with the, the ability for creators to oh, Right, directly interact with audiences and audiences directly just clicking a button, being part of that community. 
it's a lot more massive than before. So Republic is coming up and they're launching this uh, week, which I'm paying attention to. Solana Hackathon is coming. And then the last one, last one, Game On Hong Kong. The last event that I'm doing, um, Game On Hong Kong. This is uh, this is a, uh, sorry, not, not Game On, Game On. Uh, there you go. So this is happening in Hong Kong. Um, this is happening on the 15th. Today and tomorrow, I'll be speaking tomorrow uh, at the event with a panel discussion. So if you guys are in Hong Kong, make sure you tuned in to Game On for more information coming. There we go. All right, there we go. All right, here we're, where's the most punchable face on YouTube? All right, let me my, let me find my punchable for face. Oh, so yeah, yeah, Sue's there. Angelina Wang is there. There's basically a lot. This is actually quite funny, right? These. Uh, if you look at the speakers, they're not game developers. These are all just government guys. They're fun guys. They're institutional guys, right? This is this is how gaming is shaping up. This one, my punchable face. But it's actually quite interesting because this is how money moves in Hong Kong, right? Hong Kong people, especially the funds, they want to invest in game fire, which is why we saw so many people at the Animoca booths as well, right? Uh, <laughs> basically, institutional investors, they're bored. They're seeing the insane games that Animoca made, and then they're fooling way into game. And I'm trying to set um, my my panel was actually uh, brought a bunch of game devs on Hong Kong because uh, you know how my previous experience was with um, game development. So my panel is really about teaching these guys how it works. Right. Uh, <laughs> So Web3 versus Web2 gaming, we're going to shine some light onto what works and what doesn't work for Web2 and Web3 game, or well, Web3 gaming in particular. And this is with uh, Pixio, Anxious Otter, um, and then we have an ICP, uh, Darren Wan from ICP Hub, and this is me moderating. But I, I selected the candidates for this panel because Pixio, they were making crazy amounts of money. They were like continuously being featured on the App Store. Like year after year, Apple just features them on the Apple App Store because they make fun and interesting games. I want I want that spirit to come into crypto because once that happens and just like like imagine if these crypto games gets featured on the Apple App Store like like year after year or month after month like this is just one dev company so year after year they only make one game a year but if there's many game um, crypto web3 game devs and they're just getting featured nonstop imagine how many people that would be bringing be brought into crypto into this web3 gaming space that's going to be insane so anyways, I want that energy coming in. So that's going to be a panel on tomorrow. I'll see if I can record it and then show you guys on this channel. So I think what we're going to do right now uh, is that we're going to do a very quick talk with Ron. I'm going to bring Ron here. He's from the Box Mining uh, Plus channel. He's been um, trading nonstop. I just want to talk to him as well, bring him in. So Ron, if you're watching this, come in. If you're not, let me message you and then get you in on this channel. So guys, also want to do some Q&A with you guys, as I promised. I know that I'm actually a little bit annoyed by how the camera broke this morning, but Ron's an expert at fixing um, breakages on this camera. Yo, come in. So let's do some Q&A and we'll set everything ready. Um, Cryptogram says it's close to both time. Whoa, Ron, how are you? How are you, man? I'm great. Oh, I should have got you to got you to come in here to fix the camera. Yeah. All right, Ron's gonna bring the chair. Hello there. Hello there. Hello, All right, hello. I'm gonna adjust the camera a little bit so it can get both of us, capture both of us. So, so you have some confessions. I heard it's confession. Ah, uh, so last night, so for us it was Hong Kong, right? It was around 12, 1 a.m. And that's when the market started dipping. Right. And at that point, I thought, because it, why is it dipping? Inflation reading is good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so I committed, I full, like I leveraged 20x on a lot of altcoins. Right. And so you were you were part of this liquidation. Right? Yes. Yes. So you were not you were, Bitcoin, but you were part of this liquidation. Yeah, but but actually, mm -hmm. Matic. <laughs> Matic. Oh really? Yeah. But Matic is, was up, right? Matic was. Um... Yeah, it was up. But then I entered at nine two, and then I got stopped out at nine one. Oh. Yeah, I kept my stop loss tight. Then, oh you know. okay so 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 you were trading like ultra aggressive then you yeah because like because it's still up today right so i'm like well, if you mm -hmm. if you if you point to matic you know that's that's up that's still at 93 cents right yes yeah. um sd says Ron <laughs> Ron <dumped. laughs> i don't think you meant to i don't think you meant to, I don't mean to. you didn't mean to you didn't mean to so you I went too aggressive to. right yeah yeah uh, at the end of the day i keep my stop loss tight so i didn't lose much but it was still like you know 
at the emotional trading, you know that, right? You know, right? And it's emotional trading, and yeah. it gets the better of all of us. Mm. I, I don't, I, I'm not gonna say that I don't get affected by it too, because yeah. sometimes I do FOMO. Yeah. But I think I learned to not get like wrecked like the hard way, uh-huh. right? And I think that that's what most people do, right? A yeah. lot of people they. Uh, they don't. They they guess they they learn the hard way. They learn the hard way, and I think you have to actually lose in order to gain. Yeah. So welcome, yeah. welcome to the club. <laughs> welcome. welcome to the club, I'm right? Here. You gotta, you gotta, and and I think that's why these videos also uh work, right? Because like mm. in many ways, um, I'll be honest, I'll be, I'm a little tired saying, oh my god, guys, we we pulled back, but guys, keep the faith, keep up the faith, right? Mm. Feel a little bit better about yourself. I'm I'm a little bit tired making these videos because I'm like. How many times do I have to make this? You know, like I've been making these videos since since 2016, yeah. and we we had it way worse, mm-hmm. right? And then like if you're depressed in this market, mm. like I, I'm just thinking you're not gonna you're not gonna win. Yeah. Right. So yeah. I think I think so. I, what's your mentality? What what are you feeling? What what is your real emotion right now? All right. Let, let's get the let's get the reality here though. Don't let the market. Don't be the market's bitch. <laughs> don't be the market's don't bitch. Don't be the market's bitch. You take a loss, that's fine. You learn from it. But if you quit now, then that means you're the market's bitch. And you don't want that. You don't want to be anyone's bitch. Wise, right? wise words. <laughs> exactly. But you have to put the... the I'm going to be a little bit racist. You have to put the Indian music. Don't <laughs> be the market's bitch. You it's feel good. If you get stopped us now, you are the market's bitch. <laughs> Uh, we watched the same guy, right? We watched the <laughs> we watched the same guy, right? Uh, yeah. All right. So, so uh, what? A, so, okay. What's your strategy right now? I mean, I mean, why are you so aggressive though? I think I think it's also good to to share some uh, a difference here, right? Mm. Um, and I think it's it's good to have different um, views. So, why are you so aggressive? Why Why did you tw- like? I mean, I mean. I, I'm gonna make fun of him. You know, you know, I'm gonna make fun of him for the entire day. I mean, Matic is at like what ninety four cents right now, oh ninety four cents God. right now, yeah. and you got stopped out. Got right? Stopped Why out. are you so aggressive? Because well, originally I was in spot trading, and mm-hmm. I was pretty good at reading Twitter sentiment, mm-hmm. and then I actually came upon perpetuals. Like mm-hmm. I actually dived into it, and it got addicting because mm-hmm. of leverage, how much gains you can make. Mm-hmm. But that, I think that's a, that's when I realized you don't really see the other side, which is losing. Mm-hmm. Like, if you're going to toss a coin, it's fifty fifty. But that's not actually the case because mm-hmm. there are. It's gonna be like your win rate is gonna be two out of ten, or maybe even one out of ten. Mm. But but why why so aggressive? Though? It still doesn't mm-hmm. explain. I mean. I mean, there's different types of traders, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? And and you chose to be more aggressive because mm. you want more gains. And, yeah. And I, I guess like I think passively, I'm trying to work you towards a certain set um idea. Mm. It's like, um, I think, um, yeah. Wh- wh- why would you be so aggressive? Like, wh- why does that work for you? What you mean aggressive in terms of playing high leverage or yeah, uh, strategy? See, this this is kind of cool. We can we can fake we can fake a we can fake a mic here. So it sounds like you know we got the spotlight. You got a spotlight here, bro. Because I'd say right now Bitcoin is moving up, right? Mm-hmm. And I wouldn't say it's all season yet, but as Bitcoin goes up, people start to get more risk on. Mm. So a little bit of liquidity flows into altcoin, and usually that's when we see like a ten or twenty percent increase for alts. Mm. So. I want to be a part of that. Yeah, I want to capture that market share, and then just ride on it. Mm. And I think I think the point that <laughs> I, I think the point that that I wanted him to get to. Yeah. But he didn't say. But it's quite obvious. Is that I'm an old fart and he's a young man. Uh-huh. <laughs> right. Uh-huh. So so if you're younger, right, and I've seen this with a lot of younger people. So that our age uh, gap, our age gap is yeah. actually like what, like fifteen years. Fifteen. Yeah. That's scary, yeah. Huh? Yeah, but yes, are right, literally. You're forty-one. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm not thirty. Forty-one. Okay, bye. You're thirty. All right, I'm not gonna reveal my age here. I'm not gonna reveal my age here. But it's less than that. Okay, less than that. Let's say ten years. Okay, let's say hypothetically ten yeah. years, right? I think I know what you're trying to. But for me, to for me, I'm a lot more defensive, right? I have, yeah. I have, I have to, I have to have different pots around. Yes. Right, because yeah. if if. Um, I, in fact, I have to have fiat, mm-hmm. right? Because I'm a little bit older, um, you know, and also because I'm running uh, this company, there needs to be, there's daily operations costs associated yeah. to this, right? Mm-hmm. But um, on your side, you can just YOLO. Yeah. Right? And I'd say I YOLO too because my portfolio is relatively smaller. And the bigger, I'd say the big difference between now and say in 20, 
2018, 2019, when DeFi was popping, right? DeFi and ICOs made a lot of millionaires. People just, you know, invest and then a couple of months later, they made a lot of money. But now you don't really see a lot of that. Right? You don't really see a lot of that. And even if there are projects that do that, there's still whitelisting process and mm -hmm. you can't really get in. So from my mindset, right, as a, someone with a smaller portfolio, <laughs> Leverage trading is pretty much how you can build your wealth. Well, for me, that's yeah, how it yeah. works for me. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. In fact, yeah, in fact, we didn't push that. Um, he pushed it himself, right? Mm. So, so there's a big difference there. Also, I do want to say this and um, point this out. This is a, uh, uh, you know, we hear Warren Buffett a lot, right? He called uh -huh. he called Bitcoin a rat poison, mm. um, and he's very into very stable stocks right mm -hmm. so uh craft heinz mm -hmm. <laughs> right they, <laughs> this, this is like the sexiest you'll get right craft yeah. heinz you, you want a bottle of uh oh by the way um coca-cola ah. that's, that's that's the other uh big warren buffett investment right yeah. uh coca-cola uh craft heinz uh, -huh. uh we're, we're enjoying some of his fruits and labor but it makes sense for him because he's old, right? He doesn't need to go so aggressive. But mm -hmm. if you actually look at his early investment strategy with um, Charlie Munger, Munger yeah. they were going into like deep into like, they were YOLOing. Mm -hmm. They were heavy YOLOing. That's how he made his money, right? You don't get, you don't make money. You don't make trillions of dollars by sitting on, yeah. on Coca-Cola. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, Coca-Cola is great, <laughs> but, but you're not going to make trillions. You're not going to make your 20,000 X yeah. from Coca-Cola, right? Yeah. Which is why, yet again, Ron's a lot more aggressive. Like it's, it's, um, it's part of my, um, uh, I guess not my it's not my fantasy i'm trying to find the right word for this but i i try to surround myself with younger people so i'm more aggressive yeah you know yeah. like soon i'll be asking ron give me some blood <laughs> you know, give me give me some of that youthful blood energy but yeah. but it's a it's a very different strategy just want to highlight that as well like not everyone has the same strategy and everyone has the same um uh, way of investing yeah all right it is all right cool so i think that's around it for today if you guys want to catch ron uh ron is actually on the box mining <laughs> Uh, plus channel. I, mean, I need to stay clear of the back rat table. <laughs> Ronnie Ray. Oh my god. Um, wait. Charlie Munger is almost a hundred. Really? No way. Oh really? Ninety. Oh, 99, 99 years, old. years old. Whoa. And he's born on January one. Whoa. The? Oh, you're right. What? You're the... right. Uh, <laughs> so tell me about the wars. Tell me about the wars. Any one of them. <laughs> Twenty two young <laughs> <laughs> da, 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 da. all right this is me and ron we just joke all day so if you guys want to catch us me and ron having very chill sessions um box mining plus or box mining test net is uh i think i think box mining plus shows up there you go box mining plus that shows up now so we have a lot of live streams um oh let's play this video here you got you got I think I actually lost god for real? Yeah, if you look at the previous videos we did, yeah. we lost a lot of weight. I was bloated as hell. Yeah, your face filled up the whole camera. Yeah. I, could, I didn't even have space. <laughs> no, she's not watching me. Of course you didn't have space. <laughs> whole face. Yeah, I'm sure you are. I was like, oh my god. Oh my god, your face is filling up the whole camera. Oh my god. Oh, my god. oh, oh shit, sorry. Are you good? Oh my god, I'm like, ah. I love it, I love it. Let me clean it. No. <laughs> okay, anyway. Do you think I That's a weird way? stuff we produced yeah. there. Um. <laughs> there's even better ones there's even better ones yeah. so so guys um catch us on the box Living live stream channel it's just a bunch of different content uh some some good some very sensational people love sensational content right now uh andy one says who's the girl that's natalie but you don't see her why because bron hit her with a fucking pillow <laughs> Dude, if if i hit you with a oh fucking, my God. fucking pillow <laughs> You have a fucking pillow. You want to come on the stream anymore, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm just using this for defense. Now. All right, all right, all right. Sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. That's uh, violence. Violence is not tolerated in any form. Okay, even with pillows. Sorry, sorry, Ron. Sorry, 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 uh recently i'm just trying to find a good time for a live stream so tell me if this stream is good leave a comment as well if you've been watching i know a lot of people watch after the live stream so leave a comment down below you know uh of when you want to see it i've actually been streaming like at night time and on daytime hong kong time so like the 12 20 12 hours apart so i hope at least you get to catch one of them and tell me which time works well for you guys we're going to do daily live streams coming up uh cryptogram says workplace toxic hey <laughs> hey 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 and then 
imagine it's just F bombs. Here's the thing about YouTube algorithm. Yeah, <laughs> they, they a... cannot detect whatever is later, so we can curse whatever we want. <laughs> yeah. So, so the key here is that if you if you curse at the start of a live stream, that's bad. Yeah. But if you curse at the end, no one cares. It's okay. Yeah. It's kosher. YouTube's it's like, kosher. yeah, it's okay. Don't worry about it. Exactly. But at the start, at the first hour, nah, no good. Mm -hmm. Um. So, uh, steak sauces, great stream, keep it up, more box plant, please. I, um, I have a confession, box plant, um, not doing so well. Isn't that box plant? Nah, that's, that's fake box plant. Oh, that's fake box. That's fake box plant. Yeah, that's fake box plant. So, uh, <laughs> Lama Six says this, we're a gas, gas mask master work. work. That, that's, that should be the motto, the company motto, instead of like, you know, you know, something that have to have on a wall, they have like something corny, like, uh -huh. teamwork makes the dream work. Yeah. We should be like, bring a gas mask. <laughs> that's a work. <laughs> I think we did last year, COVID. Yeah, that's true. Oh man, yeah. don't, don't remind me of that. Don't remind me of that. It actually feels like five years ago. COVID. Damn. It was last year. Yeah, man, you're growing older. I'm growing older. Yeah. I found out like apparently I'm um I'm losing hair on top. <laughs> like um Are you actually? Yeah, apparently, but it's still okay. I still okay. You check guys, you check guys. We'll, we'll, we'll use this as a record, right? I'll, I'll put it here longer. But especially if I put gel on my hair, apparently that's when you can see the balding. Box box balding, man. Box balding. <laughs> Bald mining. Bald mining. Oh god. <laughs> but, but hey, 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 in my defense, okay? In in my defense, I'll join the bald 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 crew. Bald crypto. I mean it's all um <laughs> I mean look at it, it's all bald. <laughs> Lots of bald guys in crypto. CZ's going bald. Um Alright, oh yeah, this doesn't work. Which button is it? This one, this one. The, the, I, it doesn't work after I have to replug it in. We, like, bald bald was good, like bald bald was um was a meme coin. So maybe, maybe, maybe I'll join the bald crew soon. CZ's bald, Armstrong's bald, <laughs> you know? I got, I got some, you know. Some... I think you'd look like a monk. <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys, alright guys. Maybe, maybe I'll do something like if, if Bitcoin doesn't pump to like 30, oh, 300,000 next year, I'll shave my hair. That'd make great content. Bald mining. Bald mining. Welcome back to bald mining guys. Um, Bitcoin didn't make it. We're we're at two hundred and fifty thousand. It didn't make it to three hundred thousand. So <laughs> the business meeting is gonna be funny too. <laughs> Michael, why did you shave your head? <laughs> Man, that would be that would be so bad. Like if if, if like the, if it peaks out at like two hundred and two two nine nine <laughs> nine One. nine nine. And that always happens. <laughs> and then I was like, nope, nope. Three hundred k, guys. Three hundred k next year. All right, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching, guys. Uh, welcome. We'll, we'll